If you are experiencing persistent tiredness, you may have chronic fatigue syndrome or CFS. But CFS is complicated, so let's talk about what it looks like, how you receive a diagnosis, what you can expect during a doctor's appointment, and discuss some current treatments. Chronic fatigue syndrome is a serious long-term illness that affects almost every part of your body. And the definition is, is a difficult one, but it centers around profound tiredness, which doesn't get better with rest. As Dr. Singh suggests, chronic fatigue syndrome is debilitating physical and mental fatigue that endures for six months or more. But the symptoms are complex and they tend to present differently depending on the person. Doctors will also look for additional symptoms such as unrefreshing sleep, concentration or memory issues, headaches or muscle pain, sore throat, tender lymph nodes, ongoing depression, or anxiety. And if you'll notice, most of these symptoms are subjective, making it even harder to test for and find a proper diagnosis and treatment plan. In fact, Dr. Singh suggests a doctor's goal is to rule out other possible conditions first. It's a diagnosis of exclusion. When you have, to your clinical satisfaction, excluded all possible causes of presentation, that's when you can label this diagnosis. In fact, research indicates that around 1 million Americans suffer from some form of CFS, while other estimates say it could be around 2.5 million. But again, because there is no definitive test to confirm this diagnosis, it's incredibly hard to get definitive proof one way or another. And as a result, most people with CFS go undiagnosed, with some reports indicating around 84 to 91% of people who may have chronic fatigue syndrome don't receive a formal diagnosis. While it is incredibly difficult to diagnose, we do know a few things about CFS. First, research says that women are more likely to suffer from CFS than men. Second, CFS often occurs in people in their 40s and 50s. And interestingly, it affects people who are white far more than other races. Just because it's diagnosed in a particular ethnicity doesn't mean that the others don't have it. Just could be a diagnostic delay in those communities. But okay, what are the possible causes? Well, according to the CDC, we really don't know. There are some possibilities though. First, some think it could be the result of an infection, given the sudden onset of symptoms. And many infections, like Epstein-Barr and the Rost River virus, share the same symptoms as CFS. There is also research being done into whether CFS is caused by changes in the immune system. Many of the same biological processes of inflammation that occur in people with autoimmune diseases are present in people with CFS. Researchers also think CFS could be the result of stress affecting our body chemistry. In fact, people who report symptoms of CFS also indicate they have periods of physical or emotional stress right before experiencing it. Since there is no diagnostic tool for CFS, there is no real cure for it. We don't know the origins of this diagnosis. We don't know which biomarkers or physiology is exactly involved. We know how it manifests and we know how these unfortunate souls suffer but it's difficult to treat, let alone manage. At best, doctors will try to treat the prevailing symptoms you report. And depending upon which symptoms are most acute, that will often dictate the treatment path. So for example, many people with CFS report something called post-exertional malaise, which is when symptoms worsen after periods of physical or mental exertion. Often the treatment here is simply pacing yourself. It's learning to balance rest and activity so your symptoms stay manageable. If you experience trouble sleeping, your doctor might recommend developing good sleep hygiene or prescribe medication to help you sleep at night. But again, it's really about managing your symptoms in order to improve your quality of life. Now, given the lack of proper diagnostics around CFS, your doctor may not readily suspect CFS, or they may be inclined to default to that diagnosis when all other possibilities have been exhausted. Our best advice is to always walk into a physician's office prepared. Prior to your visit, do your homework, research your symptoms, your conditions, and any possible treatment options. And bring family members along because see, your perception of your own symptoms may be limited, whereas the other members of your family or people who are close to you, spouse, kids, can also examine those symptoms and how you manifest them. Write down any questions you have or might want to ask, and this is important. Document your activity and symptoms and track your post-exertional malaise. How long, right? So duration, onset, and then progression of these symptoms and any triggers that help and any triggers that don't in terms of symptoms, I think is a great starting point. Now, during your visit, your doctor is going to try to rule out as many other conditions as possible. 
so try to manage your expectations. It may take some time to finally settle on a diagnosis of CFS. Also, as you and your doctor are talking, if you don't understand something, ask questions. Make sure you can receive information about your medical case in wording you can understand. In short, be your own advocate. You're the best one you've got. If you suspect you have CFS, but you're not getting the help you need from your doctor, there are Facebook groups you can join that can help you find a new care provider who might be more sympathetic to your situation. Also, there's a very helpful CFS community active on Reddit, so check that out as well. While CFS has a negative effect on your energy levels, it's important to remember that it might only be one reason you are tired. In fact, there are many, many possible causes of tiredness and even many kinds of being tired. Understanding how you feel and what's the cause is the first step to addressing those issues and getting your energy back. So check out a video we made on that right here. As we said, CFS is tricky and you're not going to walk out of a doctor's office with a clear diagnosis. It's going to take some time, so be patient, involve your community, and do your best to manage your symptoms. Let us know in the comments if you've been diagnosed with CFS, and if so, what was the process like? Thanks for watching, everyone. Sleep and rest well.